you fail to set the right kind of goals. And that is probably one of the biggest things holding you back from your self-improvement efforts. So I was taught a lot about goal setting when I was learning to be a personal trainer, getting my personal trainer certification. And specifically the thing that always gets tossed around in the fitness industry, and this applies to other industries, other endeavors as well. But the thing that I was taught was that you need to set SMART goals. SMART being an acronym, which means specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. The idea being that if you set goals that meet all these criteria, then these goals are SMART. You are a lot more likely to hit them. And typically that means that if you are not hitting a specific goal, then that's simply because it was not a SMART goal. You were not doing the right kind of goal setting. Now that said, this entire framework is actually basically adapted from some like business guy gobbledygook that got invented at some point, I think in like the 80s or something. And so, you know, is there actually scientific validation for this? Is this actually something that works for people? I would say probably not. And the reason for that is that it's basically sort of one of those missing the forest for the trees sort of situations where it really encourages you to focus on the wrong kinds of things in terms of your goal setting. So when it comes to setting goals, most people set what are called outcome-based goals. And this division between outcome-based goals and process-based goals, which is the other kind of goal, is what I wanna talk about today and is probably the biggest reason that your goal setting is holding you back. I wrote a blog post forever ago, it feels like now, I've been in this industry for so dang long, uh, basically about how smart goals just don't work for me. That's not a thing that works. And you know, setting those goals often was holding me back. It was making me feel like a failure. And the reason for that is that I was setting smart goals that were outcome-based goals the exact same way that everybody else does. So what that meant was I was saying something like, okay, my goal for this year of training is to hit a 500 pound deadlift, 525 pound deadlift, 550, 575. You know, I would set very specific goals because again, those are smart goals. And at the end of the day, sometimes I would see progress towards those goals and sometimes I wouldn't. And then my motivation would wane, you know, wax and wane very strongly based on whether or not I was actually hitting those goals, even though I knew that those goals were just arbitrary things that I had made up in my mind. I had set these goals entirely arbitrary, but they were making me discouraged. They were making me think I'm a failure because I can't hit these entirely arbitrary goals that I've set for myself. And that is the problem with any kind of outcome-based goal. The reality is that you can put in the effort, you can put in the work, and you may or may not actually achieve the outcome specifically because there are other factors going on in your life. If, for example, I had set a goal, the exact same goal, that I want to add, say, 10 pounds onto my deadlift, and I had set that goal in January of 2020, well, that wasn't going to work out because there was a pandemic on and I wasn't going to be able to train my deadlift for a long time. And that's not really something that has anything to do with me particularly or the effort that I put in. It just has to do a lot more with the fact that there are other external factors that prevented me from reaching my goal. Likewise, a lot of people try and set very specific, you know, objective, numbers-based, smart goals that are not physically attainable for them. And that you know just happens to be with their circumstances. Maybe they don't have the amount of time to put into the training that they would like to do. Maybe they are not quite as genetically gifted as the next person. Maybe they had you know some kind of tragedy happen in their life that threw them off track. Whatever the case is, you know, every single person is different. If you set very specific objective goals like that, chances are that something's gonna happen that is going to mess you up along the way and you're not going to see the results that you're looking for. Again, even if it's not directly your fault, like you did everything that you could, that you could be reasonably expected to do in that situation and you didn't get the results you were looking for. The mental shift for me happened when I realized the difference between what is called an outcome-based goal and a process-based goal. So when you're setting goals with an outcome-based goal, obviously you're setting it based on the outcome that you want to achieve, which is you know a specific target. When you're setting it with a process-based goal, what you are saying is, I am committing not to you know the thing that I want to accomplish, I am committing to putting the work in. And so for example, if my outcome is, hey, I would like my deadlift to improve, you know, do I specifically care about the exact number? No, probably not a good idea to set an arbitrary number for that 
which will then frustrate me if I don't hit it. But if I say, hey, I understand that the way that I increase my deadlift is by training more. And if I know that I can then commit to the process of training, then I know that realistically, I will get the best possible outcome that I can get from putting in the best possible effort that I can put in. And that is satisfying on its own, because then even if, you know, maybe my deadlift doesn't increase as much as I would like, that doesn't matter because you have kept to the process. The process is what matters and you feel satisfied for having stuck to the process and thus accomplished your goal. And so that is basically the smart way, actually smart way, not in terms of SMART, the acronym, that is the actual smart way to set goals, is to set goals based on processes that you can commit to rather than outcomes that you can't control. So if you say things like, I commit to training four days a week for the next year, that's a process-based goal that you have 100% control over. You're the person who decides how much you train. Yes, it's possible that things will throw you off a bit, but you are not being limited by your external results. You are putting in the work and what you get out of it is up to the universe. And the reality is that setting these process-based goals tends to lead to better results. And the reason for that is that when you set process-based goals, you are much less likely to be discouraged when you have a bad week, when you have a bad month, when you even have a bad year. Hell, I have had entire, like several year spans where I was continuing to train, but things just didn't end up going the way that I wanted because things got thrown off here and there. That's the reality of the situation. You can commit to putting in the effort, but you know, you can never really be certain exactly what results you're going to get. Sometimes things are going to click, everything is going to go well, you're gonna get exactly the results you want. Other times you're gonna be thrown off, other things are gonna be happening in your life and you're not gonna get the results you want. But that's fine because so long as you commit to the process, you are winning, you are succeeding, you are getting everything that you have set out to achieve because all you set out to achieve was the process. And this is the exact method that I have used for basically all of my self-improvement efforts since then. Of course, I recognize that I'm gonna have missteps. Of course, I recognize that I'm going to have failures, but I commit to a very specific strategy of practicing all the things that I want to be good at over time. That includes things like reading, learning specific skill sets, learning new languages, going to the gym, building up a social media presence. It includes things like making YouTube videos, all of that stuff, you know, so long as you keep at it, so long as you keep practicing and committing to the process and don't let yourself get discouraged by a little failure, a little setback here or there, a little time where you didn't quite see the results you were looking for. The end result is that over time you get better because you are able to stick to the process and the process is what matters. The process is at the end of the day, what gives you the results. If you focus on the things that you can control and you don't worry so much about the things that you can't control, then you are going to have a lot more ability to manage your life effectively and you are going to get ahead of 99% of people out there. You are going to be much, much better than the average person who tries to practice something really hard for a little while, gets discouraged when they don't quite see the results they were looking for, or don't quite hit the goal that they had set for themselves, and then they end up burning out, moving on, and just skipping the whole thing entirely, and as a result, just losing all of their results. So I hope that this video has been meaningful to you. As always, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, smash that notification bell, tell me know what you would like to see in future videos. Go home right now, set yourself a process-based goal for what you want to achieve in the future, and get to it. Have a good week.